Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great Saturday this morning. I hope that you enjoy your time with your family. The Word of God says, and I usually say it, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, okay? And uh, so enjoy the Saturday. And you know what? Get ready for Sunday tomorrow. I, I hope that you are attending church. I hope that you can go to your church. Uh, respect the rules, you know, uh, the mask, the glove, whatever it is. It's safe distancing. Do all that. But go to church. Have a great time at church service tomorrow. Okay, this uh, this morning, I just want to touch a little bit this morning on the story of Cornelius in the book of Acts chapter 10. Okay, him and Peter, okay, uh, they have this interaction. Okay, Peter the apostle, okay, and uh, he's going to be used as the tool, the vessel to come and uh, speak to Cornelius about accepting uh, accepting Christ as Lord and Savior, okay. If you get time this week, sometime this week, I wish you would read uh, Acts chapter 10. I think it, it, you might get a little better insight uh, into to what I'm trying to tell you this morning, uh, you know, because I don't have that kind of time uh, to explain it in, in a 15-minute uh, program, if that's what you want to call it. But if you read the book, you'll understand where I'm coming from, okay, this morning. Uh, this morning, uh, chapter 10, verse 1, book of Acts, says as follows. There was a certain man in Caesarea, uh, called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, okay? And this man, he was a good man, okay? And there's a lot of good people in the world, you know? There's a lot of good people that do a lot of good deeds and help people and give donations. And, you know, just the other day I was taught, I, I was seeing on television about a this a great, uh, uh, supposedly great movie star or great actor or whatever. And uh, they got to harping on what all the good stuff he does for people. But I don't know personally if he's saved or, or, or not saved. He may be. He may not be. I don't know. It's not for me to judge. I hope he is. I hope she is. But and that he does a lot of things, you know. And sometimes uh, people do a lot of things, okay? People do a lot of things. And uh, and, and doing good good things is, is, is great. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. And we should all do that, okay? We should try to help as many people as we can in some form, shape, shape or fashion, and uh, do the best that we can, not, not because somehow or another that, uh, you know, we, we want to get no, uh, noticed for it, okay? But do it because you have compassion for people, you have love for people, and uh, do it for that reason, okay? But uh, Cornelius was one, of the, was one of those people, okay? He was, uh, and, and if you read the, uh, this story, okay, it says as follows, that Cornelius, Cornelius was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house. And he gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, okay? There's several points here that are made, okay? Cornelius was a devout man. He was a, a, a religious man, if you want to use that word, okay? And there's a lot of religious people. And let me help you this morning. Religion does not get you to heaven, okay? Okay. Uh, I don't want to step on anybody's toes this morning uh, for the sake of stepping on your toes. But, you know, if, if I say something and it offends you because I say it, uh, let me let me let, let me say something that the Apostle Paul once said and said in the, in the word of God it says in the word of God. When you get time, you can look it up. He said, am I your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. I'm not here. I hope not. I'm you know, if I if I tell you truth, it's Bible truth. OK, I'm not here to try to I, I'm not here throwing stones or trying to you know, point fingers or this, that, and the other. I've got enough problems of my own, okay? But the only thing that matters to me is the salvation of souls. It's where you stand with God. And But I'm, I'm especially speaking to those that perhaps aren't saved this morning. And for some reason or another, the Spirit of God has brought them to, to, to listen to this sermon, whether they're listening to it this morning or throughout the week or in the coming months. I have no idea. My sole purpose is to win souls for the Lord. Okay, that's my sole purpose. Okay, I have a lot of things I can teach on and preach on, and I say that very humbly. I'm not, I'm not no great uh, theologian, you know, but I just love the Word of God, so I like preaching and teaching on that. So, um, let me put it to you this way: uh, I don't care how many good things you do, you will not get to heaven. This man Cornelius, listen, let me break it down for you real quick. He was a devout man, but he was not saved. Okay. He feared God, but this did not save him, okay? He gave alms, and he gave a lot of things to people, but this did not save him, okay? He prayed to God always, but this does not save him, okay? He he saw a vision, but this did not save him, and he saw an angel of God, 
But this also did not save him. Guys, we can see visions and we can have dreams and we can help people and we can we, we can be as religious as we can. We can be as good at two shoes as we as we think we can be. But that will not save us. Okay, that does not save us. And I'm preaching to saved and unsaved this morning because the saved people, you need to be a, a an individual that's a witness, okay, for the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of God. For Jesus Christ, okay? Those that are not saved, this word is for you so that you can come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You need him, people. You need Those that are not saved, you need Jesus. Those that are saved, you need Jesus. We need Jesus, okay? So I want you to understand that this morning, this man was a great man, okay? But he was not saved. And I don't care how much money you got in the bank and what you do and who you give it to and this, that, and the other. That will not save you. One day God told Cornelius, he, he said, an angel of God came and told Cornelius, God's heard, heard what you've been doing. Okay, he's seen what you've been doing. But God wants you to send a, a man to Joppa, and there's a man over there, and he's called Peter. He's an apostle of, uh, he was apostle, he's an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to go send him over there and tell him to come over here because I want him to speak to you so that you can get to know Jesus Christ as Lord, as Lord and Savior. So he did such a thing. In the meantime, Peter's having a dream over here, or, or, or seeing a vision. And, you know, it's about, and if you read the Word of God in chapter 10, I want you to read that. Uh, Peter was having a, a dream and he saw in this vision, all kind of animals, okay, in a vessel. And it almost looked like a, a, a blanket coming down with, you know, and all kinds of vessels. And, and God in the vision told him, Peter, get up and eat. And Peter said, God, you know, I don't eat all kinds of stuff. You know, there's hogs there and this, that, and the other. And we don't do that. You know, I'm a Jew. You know, how can I defile myself? And I um, mean, you know, sometimes we get so pompous and so full of ourselves that it's, it's embarrassing. Okay. It's embarrassing. And we shouldn't do that. And God said, what I, whatever I've cleaned, you better not be calling common. Okay. So Peter says, okay. There's some guy, and God told, uh, the angel of God told Peter, there's some men coming here to talk to you. And when they talk to you, you go with them, okay? So they came, and Peter talked to them. They talked to him, this and the other. Say, we have we have our, our, our master, and he's Cornelius. And God, uh, he sent us over here because God told him to come and get you in because you had words for his household. And so Peter went, got there, okay? And when Peter got there, Peter uh, got to know Cornelius, okay? And he knew he was a... A good man as far as human, the, the human eye is concerned, okay? But as they kept speaking, uh, whether it was Cornelius or Peter, uh, they uh, or both of them actually came to, to realize that Cornelius needed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, okay? So Peter got to telling them about Jesus and about the miracles of Jesus and about that the only way to get to heaven was through accepting Christ as his Lord and Savior. And his household to accept him as Lord and Savior. You know, the word of God says that today is now, that today now, right now, is the day of salvation. This is an opportunity for a lot of you that don't know Jesus to come to Jesus Christ, okay? And here directly we'll say just a short prayer. It's just a simple short prayer that will get you to come to Jesus, okay? And if you say the simple prayer and you believe it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth, guess what? You will be saved. You are saved immediately. It's not It's not a process. You're, you're saved instantly, okay? Jesus paid that price on the cross so that you could have victory this morning, okay? And so that those that are saved, if you're standing in the gap for somebody, stand in the gap for somebody, okay? Perhaps they'll come to know Jesus this morning or sometime during the week when they listen to this message because you cared to stand in the gap for them, okay? You cared to... to, to, to to, to, to speak on behalf of your cousins or your mama or your mama or your papa or your brothers, your sister, whoever, okay? Whoever, whosoever will, the word of God says, okay? So I want you to understand this because we've all sinned, okay? We've all come short of the glory of God. So at one point or another, we have to surrender our lives to, to Christ. So this morning, uh, there's some people that need to surrender their lives to Jesus, okay? So Peter spoke to Cornelius. Cornelius, guess what Cornelius do? Did he accept that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior after this testimony? Read this chapter. Please read this chapter. You'll get excited reading it. And then his family followed suit. Then they got filled with the Spirit of God. But that's another story. I'm Pentecostal and I believe in the infilling of the Spirit of God. Okay, so, but that's another story. And uh, it's a wonderful story too also. But let me tell you this. This morning, if you need, if you need Jesus, and by the way, being Pentecostal does not save you. Me being Pentecostal does not save you. You know what saves me? 
having Christ as my Lord and Savior. So don't give me about that you're, you're Baptist or Methodist or Catholic or Lutheran or whatever. That will not save you. Okay? So if I'm stepping on some toes this morning, I don't mean to be mean because I'm not mean. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy even if I say so myself. Well, anyway, I tell that myself all the time. Okay? So anyway, uh, so no, your religion will not save you. Your doctrine will not save you. Your personal theology will not save you. Your uh, and uh, your 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 uh, assemblies of God people, your 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 uh, bylaws and rules and this that and the other will not save you. Uh, my Catholic friends, sacraments will not save you. Okay, uh, nothing saves you but Jesus, but the blood of Christ. Okay, so please don't get mad at me. Don't get angry with me. All I'm doing is preaching Bible. So pick up the Bible, read it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm not here to. Make anybody angry? I love for you to tune in and and view with me and 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 uh, uh, be a part of what we're doing because we're winning souls for Christ. What religion, what church you attend to, that's your business. It's not my business. My business is for you to get to know Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, as long as it's a it's a religion, as long as it's a a, a movement that that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Okay. So, like I said, I'm not I'm not here to offend anybody. Because I'm picking on your religion. I, you know, as I said earlier, I've got enough faults of my own. I'm not here to, to throw rocks or nay, call names or this, that, and the other, or point fingers. I, I'm just here in the love of Jesus Christ to, to, to win souls for the Lord. Okay, so I hope that you help me this morning as you stand in the gap for somebody to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I want you to know again, as, as uh, 2 Corinthians 6 2 says, that today is the day of salvation. Okay. Today is a day of salvation. It's not the day of the Assemblies of God or the Pentecostal Holiness or Four Square Church or or, or, or Baptist, Southern Baptist, uh, Independent Baptist or Independent, uh, like I am Independent, but but, but being Pentecostal anyway. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, none, no, it's got nothing to do with that, okay? It's all about Jesus Christ and Him crucified and what He did at the cross for you and for me so that we might have life and life and, li and life forever, okay? And life forever, so... Uh, just get a hold of that, okay? Just get a hold of that. And uh, 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 so this morning, uh, stand in the gap for somebody. I'm going to say a short prayer right here. And if you say this short prayer, whoever you may be, and even those that are standing in the gap for somebody, these people can be saved, okay? If they believe in their heart and confess with their mouth. That's it, it's just it, it's just a simple. If you want to call it a formula, call it a formula. But me, I, I just call it it's just a simple word. God did not make this difficult, okay? God didn't make this difficult, okay? So just say after me, just say with these words with me, okay? Just repeat them after me, all right? It says as follows. I am a sinner, and I know I've been, I've been a sinner, Jesus. But Jesus, this morning, I need a change in my life. I've tried everything else. I've done everything else, and nothing works. Nothing brings me peace of heart and mind. And Jesus, this morning, I'm asking you to come into my heart. Change my life. Turn my life around. I surrender myself to you. And Jesus, I believe it with my heart and I confess it with my mouth this morning that you have come into my heart and right now I am a changed man. I am a changed woman and I give you honor and glory and worship and praise because you paid the price at Calvary for me. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you. Amen and amen. Uh, that's all I've got this morning. Read uh, chapter 10 in the book of Acts, okay? And get insight into this, okay? Get insight into this, and it's such a wonderful and beautiful story. So, uh, my name again is Peter Flores, and uh, our mailing address our mailing address is P.O. Box 2483, Hereford, Texas, uh, 79045. And uh, we have a Venmo account if anybody wants to support this ministry. Uh, and uh, if you've got a testimony, please send me a testimony. Okay, I love to read it over uh, over this uh, YouTube stuff. And uh, you know what? I won't mention your name if you don't want me to. But send me a testimony, and uh, tell let, let's let's tell people about what Jesus has done for you. Okay. So all I can say this morning is have a great day, great weekend, have a church great church service tomorrow, and uh, bye bye. Have a great one.